Henry David Thoreau once said, things do not change, we do. So just a little bit about me. I've been teaching theater and communication for over 20 years. And I have taught all ages, from pre-K to high school, uh, to community college and higher ed. And I can tell you one thing. I have never been afraid of change. I've always embraced it. Whether that is trying the new technology in my classroom, whether it's using whatever the pop culture references are at the time. And I'm going to use a lot of them in the speech, so I'm so sorry. Um, and I also use those things. What are those things? Those, the kids like them these days, those videos. Uh, TED Talks, right? Yeah, TED Talks, right? So, um, so going back to face-to-face -face teaching um, after begrudgingly teaching two and a half years online, ooh, I went back with a post-pandemic mindset in a pre-pandemic world, and the things that happened in that first semester back really shined a blaring and bright light on everything that I thought I knew. All right, so picture it. The day has come. It's about a year and a half ago. I get the email. It, Does anybody want to go back to face-to-face -face learning? And I was like, I do. I want to go back. I could not wait for that day. Every single day teaching online. I longed for the before times, right? I wanted to go back. I wanted to be in that face-to-face -face classroom with my students, feel that energy. And immediately, I must have been the first person that answered that email. I was like, yes, 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 yes. And I got a class, public speaking, because you know how much everybody loves public speaking, right? Very excited about it. And so I was like, yes, I'm in. So the day finally comes. I put on my, my new first day school outfit, so excited to dress like a normal person, no sweatpants. And um, I had my 15 cups of coffee. I drove to the campus. I'm, you know, fully caffeinated, very excited. I swing open the door expecting it to be what it was. And it wasn't. It was quiet. There was no one there. I was expecting the hustle and bustle of the students. But there was really no one. I actually checked to make sure I was, I was so excited. Maybe I went on the wrong day. But no, it was the first day of class. It was just quiet. And as I walked down the hallway, I felt like I was in a time capsule, stuck between the past and what could be the future. On the billboards, there were still flyers from 2020 events that never happened. I looked in the classrooms, and the desks were still stacked up after, I guess, the rooms were disinfected. Every room had that like weird robot air purifying thing like buzzing around. And then you couldn't go two feet without a hand sanitizer station. Uh, it, it was more like, not so, so much a time capsule, but I felt like I was in the twilight zone. Like I'm in limbo, right, between the past and the future. It really, it, it hit me. And so I said, you know what, once I walk up the three flights of steps, which that I didn't miss. Uh, but I said, once I get up to my classroom and I see my students' faces, everything is going to be the way that it was. I'm going to get that all back, that feeling. And I swing open that door, and I look, and there they are, all 22 of my students, staring at me. Because I couldn't see their face, because we all had masks on. So I was like, okay, this is a little weird, too. Twilight Zone, fantastic. I'm going to go with it. And I do, you could see my energy. You picture now... I didn't mention, I said it was public speaking, which is delightful, but it was an 8 a.m. Monday morning class with me full of 18 cups of coffee and full of excitement. I'm like, hello, everybody, Professor Shrest here. And I go into the whole thing. I mean, I had dusted off that syllabus, and I had judged it up, and I said, you know what? I have two and a half years of all this stuff that I've collected, so when I go back face to face, they're gonna love, they're gonna love this at 8 a.m. They're gonna love it. A speech a week, oh, divine, right? Totally great. Okay. So I'm going over everything, but, but no one asked a question. No one took any notes. They just stared at me. I said, okay. All right. This is less the Twilight Zone, actually, and it has become a Tim Burton movie. It is awkward 
quiet, bleak. I was like, all right, I'm hilarious. I'm just going gonna, gonna to get him with my jokes because I'm so funny, right? I'm short, so I have to make up for my height in the jokes. So I start making, like, all these, like, Michael Scott from The Office jokes, you know, like, what you say? nothing, nothing, not a laugh, not a giggle, not a pity giggle. You guys did a great pity giggle. I appreciate that. Thank you. Didn't even get that. So I took a deep breath. I tried not to spiral out because that's what I do. I get into my head, and I said, okay. You know what? We got a full semester. It's going to be great. Everything's going to be fine. September came and went. October came and went. And I started to notice a pattern. I was losing students. There were a lot of empty chairs. So I said, okay, something is up. And by the time I came back from Thanksgiving break, I had gone from 22 students to six. Six students. Those troopers... They stayed. And so when I, when we had our first day back from the break, I, I said, you know what, the only way I'm going to figure this out is if we have a conversation. So I said, listen, uh, we're going to do something a little different. Let's all sit together. Let's have a chat. I said, I have two questions for you. Why are you still here? And what the heck did I do? What did I do to my students to make them disappear? And so one student's like, well, Professor, you know, I stayed because you're funny. This is a funny class. It's hard to make public speaking funny, and you made it funny and fun, and I stayed. Because um, I didn't think another teacher would be that way. And I said, oh, okay, that's cool, all right. And other students said, well, you know, I need public speaking for my career in the future, so, yeah, I'm going to stay in the class. And then another student so kindly said, well, I got this far. I might as well just get through it. That is fair. It's fair. And then we had another part of the conversation which it stung. It stung. It was a very raw, honest conversation. I asked them for it, and I got it. And either I didn't want to see it, or I don't know. Maybe I was blind to it because I was just so excited to be back. Well, they said to me that technically it wasn't just my class. It was all the classes. That all of the teachers just came back full throttle. And they, they like gave like a tidal wave of back to normal, not a tidal wave, a tsunami wave of back to normal. And they said that they were just trying to get back into school life, work life, social life. And then they get all of these other responsibilities, not just in my course, but in all the other courses, all this responsibility, all these things to read and do and deadlines that they weren't used to in two and a half years. And it hit me. And I felt terrible. And I said, okay. I said, listen, let's, I need some redemption. So an idea popped in my head. And I said, you know what? For the next couple of weeks that we have together, I want you to tell me what you want to do. This is your class. You made it this far. Tell me what you want to do. You tell me what you would like to happen the next couple of weeks in our course. So one student's like, oh, professor. Can we break up into groups and then have like a presentation contest and then you could be the judge and then you could choose which side did the best speech? And I was like, I love that. Absolutely. And I was like, no, no. Instead of doing it that way, can we do it where uh, someone does the worst speech and then you get to judge that? And I was like, oh my gosh, we could do both of those things. I love that. Then another student raises his hands and I'm like, yes. And he goes, like, can we? bring in snacks. And I said, yes, we can bring in snacks. And then another student said, oh, professor, listen, I've been telling my friends how fun this class is. And they're, you know, students at the college, but their courses are kind of done. Can they join us and be in the presentation competition? And I was like, instead of three and three, we'll have four and four. I can do math as a theater major. Yes, please. Yes, absolutely. And that's what we did for the last couple of weeks. We had snacks. We had competitive presentations. The worst ones were the best ones. And at the end, I always ask for feedback at the end of every semester. And the one thing that they said that really stuck with me was thank you. Thank you for giving us a voice. Thank you for letting us contribute. And then it hit me that the students are shareholders in that course, and they should be given opportunities more and more to say what they want out of it. 
So that following spring, I gave a workshop to my colleagues at the college. I entitled it very cleverly, what I thought would be my worst semester became my best semester. And I took a big chance because um, I talked about all my failures the previous semester, because usually in front of your colleagues, you're given a workshop, you want to talk about the things you did really well. Well, I talked about all the things I sucked at. Like, I really just went for it. And I talked about the empty seats and the miscommunications and the unopened emails of, like, are you coming back to class? And what I got in return was camaraderie. My colleagues were going through the same thing. And I didn't feel so alone. And we had a great conversation about how we can make it better moving forward. I brought up my idea of students being shareholders and giving them a voice in the class. And I got a little pushback because they figured, well, you're going to let the students run amok. No. You're just offering them opportunities throughout the semester to share their thoughts, their feelings, their ideas, to contribute. And it creates a sense of pride. It makes them feel really invested in the course. So for example, that spring, instead of teaching public speaking, I was teaching interpersonal communication. And I started that class from day one being very transparent and honest, saying that, yeah, in two and a half years, my interpersonal communication skills were very lacking. How about you guys? And everybody was like, yes, we are terrible. I said, cool, we're going to learn together. We're going to grow together. We're going to get better together. And I said, I'm going to challenge you throughout the semester. I'm going to offer you opportunities to tell me what you want to do. So the opportunity arose. We were learning about body language. So I said, OK, it's time, a couple of weeks in. It's time. Give me a suggestion. What could we do as a group that we can interactively participate and then learn about body language? So my student was, uh, poker. I said, poker? He goes, poker, professor. I have a poker set. I can bring it in. I can teach everybody how to play poker. Because in poker, you look for tells. That's body language. Oh, look, oh, it's actually brilliant. Absolutely, we're doing that. Because little did he know, I have a master's degree in theater. And also, I've played Texas Hold'em for a very long time. And everybody hates me because I'm the best. So I figured, this is going to be great. So he, we, next class, he sets everything up. We're sitting around. We're playing. I'm like, I'm going to get these guys real good. Yeah, no. They, they destroyed me. They demolished me. Even the students like, I don't know how to play. She won every time. And then they said that, basically, I guess my tells were told. I've lost all my, you know, body language skills. And in the end, again, I asked for feedback. And the students were like, thank you again for giving us all these opportunities to contribute to the class. And I'm like, ah. Once I realized that that philosophy works, there's no going back. And I've done that ever since. So this semester, fall of 2022, I teach early college. And my early college students said that I should give them a shout out, which I will, because they have helped me with the speech the entire time. And they've been contributors, not only to my speech, but to the class. And instead of having 22 students, I have 23 students, because I had to sign the OK to get an extra student in. And, and the experience has been so great. So if you get one thing from what I've told you today, I hope that it's this. Please, no matter what your profession, no matter what you do in life, give yourself some grace. Give yourself some grace. It's not always going to be what you thought it was going to be. And that's OK. And sometimes you're going to try, and you're going to fail. And that's OK. One of my favorite playwrights is Samuel Beckett. And there's a quote that I keep in the back of my head that I always think about, which is, ever tried, ever failed? No matter. Try again. Fail again. Fail better. What a great philosophy. Thank you, Samuel Beckett. Yes, I will fail better. Because that means that I'm trying, that I'm growing, that I'm evolving. Keep doing that. Because remember, we are shareholders on this very imperfect planet. And we are constantly going around trying to make it perfect. And I'm sorry to tell you this. There is no such thing as perfection. You're never going to achieve it. And that's OK, right? Because remember, 
things aren't changing. We change. So embrace that. Thank you.